All right, what we have here is a fraction that has a denominator with a radical in it, and you are not allowed to have denominators with radicals. So what we have to do is apply a process called rationalizing the denominator. It's just basically getting rid of a denominator that has a radical sign in it. And here's how we approach this. So the first thing that we have to understand is that if you multiply anything by one, that value still stays the same because anything times one is itself. So basically to rationalize our denominator, we're doing the same thing, except for instead of writing one, we're going to write one in a different way. And here's what you're going to do. So instead of multiplying this by the number one, we just write the number one in a different way. We take our denominator that's under the radical and we rewrite that same value, the square root of five. But on the top, we write the exact same thing. Now the square root of five over the square root of five still is equal to one because it is something divided by itself. So basically we're not changing the value of one over the square root of one fifth. We're just rewriting the way it looks by multiplying it by one. Now here's why this ends up working out. So if we take a look at the denominator, we have a five under this radical and a five under that radical. So really that turns into the square root of 25. So by multiplying something under the radical by itself, it turns it into a perfect square. Now on the top, we have one times the square root of five, which is the square root of five. Now you are allowed to have a radical for the numerator, just not for the denominator. So what we're gonna do is simplify this by keeping the square root of five on the top. And on the bottom, the square root of 25 is five. And you cannot simplify this any further. So the square root of five over five is our answer. All right, let's try another example. All right, so right away we multiply the given fraction by the number one, but we write the number one as the square root of three over the square root of three. So basically we just take what's our denominator and multiply that by itself. So what we have here now on the bottom is the square root of nine, which is now a perfect square. And on the top we have three times the square root of three. Now the square root of nine on the bottom would be equal to three. And on the top, we still have three times the square root of three. And we can simplify this a bit further by taking three and dividing it by three, which would be one. And one times the square root of three is just the square root of three. So that would be our answer. All right, let's try another example. All right, so once again, we write the square root of seven on the bottom and on the top. Keeping in mind that really means the number one. It's just a different way of writing one whole. And on the bottom, that gives us the square root of 49. And on the top, we have 21 times the square root of seven. All right, so on the bottom, the square root of 49, which is a perfect square, is seven. And on the top, we still have 21 times the square root of seven. And we can simplify 21 over seven. Well, 21 divided by seven is three. So our final answer is three times the square root of seven. Now, when you get used to this process, you probably are going to end up skipping a step. For example, here's what I like to do. So, I already know that when I multiply the square root of seven on the bottom, that's gonna be a perfect square, which is 49. So essentially what happens is, whenever you multiply something under the radical by itself, the answer ends up being what is under the radical. So really all I like to do is I like to take the number under the radical and just write it by itself. And I end up moving that radical to the top right away. And then just writing whatever numerator was already on the top. And then from that point, I just simplify. So 21 over seven is three, which gives us three times the square root of seven. But it's probably a good idea at first just to write it out the long way until you get used to the process. All right, let's do another example. All right, so for this problem, notice that the numerator and the denominator are both under the radical symbol. So when that occurs, what I like to do is this. I like to rewrite it as a square root of two over the square root of five. Now we still have to rationalize our denominator by taking that denominator and rewriting it as the numerator and the denominator. 
So we're still multiplying it by one whole, but we're using the square root of 5, which allows us to get rid of the radical on the bottom. So that gives us the square root of 25 on the bottom. And on the top, we have the square root of 2 times the square root of 5, which gives us the square root of 10. All right, so for the denominator, the square root of 25 is 5. And for the numerator, there are no perfect squares that are factors of 10, so we have to leave 10 underneath the radical symbol. So this is as far as we can simplify. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, so I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of 7 over the square root of 3. And we're going to multiply that by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, which is equal to... Now, I already know that the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is going to be the square root of 9. And the square root of 9 is 3. So I'm going to skip that step because at this point it becomes mental math. And on the top, I have the square root of 7 times the square root of 3, which is the square root of 21. And that does not contain any perfect squares, so we cannot simplify this any further. All right, let's do yet another example. All right, so I'm going to rewrite this as a square root of x to the second power over the square root of 3. And we're going to multiply this by the square root of 3 on the bottom and the square root of 3 on the top, which leaves us with the square root of 9 on the bottom. And on the top, we have the square root of x squared times the square root of 3. Now, x to the second power really is a perfect square. And whenever you have something to the second power underneath something that is a square root, that radical and the exponent cancel each other out. So we really just have an x right here on the top. But we cannot pull any perfect squares out of 3, so that's going to remain underneath our radical symbol. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. So on the outside of the square root of 3, we're going to write just an x, and the square root of 3 after that, and on the bottom, the square root of 9 is 3. All right, let's go ahead and do one more example. Okay, notice for the numerator here, we have something raised to the fourth power. And whenever you have anything that's raised to an even number underneath a square root, basically you have a perfect square here. So we can illustrate this by doing this. We should understand that x to the second power times x to the second power is the same thing as x to the fourth. So if we took the square root of that, we have something multiplied by itself. So the square root of x to the fourth power would just be x to the second power. And of course, we're going to have to divide that by the denominator, which is the square root of 2. So we still have to rationalize this by multiplying by one whole, but we write one whole as the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. And now for the denominator, we have the square root of 4. And for the numerator, we can pull one of these x squares from underneath this radical. So we have an x to the second power on the outside. But this 2 has to stay trapped on the inside because 2 does not contain any factors that are perfect squares. And so we have one more step here. I cannot break down this numerator anymore, but the square root of 4 on the bottom would be equal to 2. So x squared times the square root of 2 over 2 is this value rationalized. All right, I hope this little tutorial helped you understand how to rationalize denominators a little bit better. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can become informed as new tutorials become available.